jackets there. <laughs> we do have other groups using um, that space throughout the week. Um, so it's just kind of, when you leave the fellowship hall, check to make sure you have all of your stuff. Because we have, um, we're starting spring. And as you know, in the spring, our fellowship hall gets used um, almost every Saturday. Which also means that if you want to schedule something on a Saturday, get it in early. <laughs> so that we make sure that you can be in the fellowship hall. Um, anyone who is ever on the uh, calendar first is the one who gets dibs. Now downstairs, we can accommodate as many people downstairs as want to use it. We're still not using that space as well as we could. So feel free to schedule things downstairs, but um, be aware that there's a lot scheduled in the fellowship hall and in the library during the week and fellowship hall on Saturday. Lastly, some of you like these fish banks. They're in the back for one great hour of sharing. Now, these are white. They can be colored in. They can be bedazzled. You can make these your own. But if you'd like to take a fish bank for the one great hour of sharing, it's not limited to the kids. Anyone can take one. Feel free to take one and fill it up for one great hour of sharing. We'll be collecting one great hour of sharing on Easter. Are there other announcements that need to be made this morning? Then let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God together.
approach God with our confessions, trusting that even before we speak, God knows us and loves us. Please pray with me the prayer for forgiveness. God of glory and righteousness, we confess that we do not live as citizens of your kingdom. We give allegiance to earthly thrones. We ignore the neediness in our midst. We discount our own work. We forsake the justice due to your kingdom. We take from us the spirit of isolation, greed, lust for power, and false pride. Give us instead the spirit of interdependency, generosity, humility, and love. Amen. Beloved, in Christ you are blessed by God to inherit the kingdom, prepared for, for you from the foundations of the world. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you are refashioned every day to live according to God's reign in the freedom of Jesus Christ. Friends, know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Our beds. 
grandpa's making pancakes for his favorite sleepy heads. Grandpa ever make you pancakes? Yeah? <laughs> your daddy makes pancakes? Does your daddy make pancakes? Yeah. Oh, pancakes are always good. And your mom made you some pancakes too. Cool. We love to visit grandpa. It's always so much fun. Your mom makes pancakes too? M&M pancakes. <laughs> we love to visit Grandpa. It's always so much fun. He lets us play outside all day so we can jump and run. Whipper sigh, cloudy sky. It's too wet to play. We don't want to stay inside because of rain today. Grandpa smiles and says to us, I know what we can do. Let's go and find some colors for my famous rainbow stew. Splish, splash, huddle dash. We bound right out the door. We're off to find some red and green, and some yellow, orange, and more. Grandpa shows us how to move between the garden row, lifting up the dripping leaves. We see, yeah, you see the great colors, you see the colors grow. Okay, so you tell me if you eat these vegetables, okay? Drip, drop, shake, hop. Here are lots of greens. Spinach, kale, and cucumbers. Zucchini, peas, and beans. Do you like green vegetables? Yeah. What's your favorite green vegetable? Peas? What about you?
would you put? Uh, I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> Whatever's the colors in the rainbow, your favorite vegetables. And I'm thinking about white cabbage in there that makes a cloud. Oh, that would be a really good idea. I, I like I like cabbage. Okay, who wants to take my book? Sunday. Oh, there's Sunday school teaching. You can take Sunday to Sunday school, okay? And go with Mrs. Hepburn. She's got Sunday school today. Let us pray. Speak to us now, O oh Lord. Guide us by your word and spirit all along this Lenten journey. Open our hearts and minds to understand and follow what you are saying to us in the messages of scriptures. Empower us in these 40 days to live in your ways in the world. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Today's first reading comes from Numbers 21, verses 4 through 9. From Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became discouraged on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze, and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. This ends the first reading.
Our second reading comes from the Gospel according to John. Listen for God's word to us. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The grass withers and the flowers will fade, but the word of our Lord endures forever. If it was darker as we woke up this morning, the hope of daylight savings time is that we'll have more daylight during our waking hours to enjoy our time outdoors. But right now, we're in the mud season. Too cold and too early to plant radishes, lettuce, and carrots. But with the daylight lasting long enough to get many of us home before dark, there are subtle shifts in the light as we start moving closer to spring. Well, this morning we might have felt a sharp delineation between darkness and light. We don't often live in dualities. Yet, in John's Gospel, the writer consistently presents two mutually exclusive outcomes when it comes to one's response to Jesus. Belief versus suddenly. Life versus death. Light versus darkness. These dualities reflect the worldview of the time. John does not offer nuance, but binary choices. However, when we locate this passage in context, this discourse is a long response to questions by Nicodemus, a Pharisee, that he posed to Jesus in a nighttime conversation. Nicodemus had witnessed the signs. He believed that Jesus had something to teach him. He sought Jesus' counsel. As a lifelong learner and a student of the scriptures, Nicodemus came to Jesus as the next steps in his education. The next steps that Jesus proposes to a deeper relationship with God, though, is a full immersion into the life of discipleship, a full immersion into committing to make choices for God, a full immersion into the very spirit of God. Will Nicodemus go into the unknown, so filled with the spirit, that he will never be the same? Will he be born from above? Nicodemus struggles with the notion of being born from above, born of water and the spirit, to enter the kingdom of God. Because Nicodemus, steeped in the temple tradition, thought that only proselytes needed spiritual rebirth. Isn't he already? One of God's people? He was not only an Israelite, but a religious leader. Certainly, certainly, such a radical change was not necessary for those born into a faith. But Jesus challenges Nicodemus to expand this notion of who God is and of God's love. It's much more expansive and radical 
than anything that Nicodemus could ever imagine. Further, this divine love is sacrificial and salvific. John intentionally uses the Greek verb hypsio, which carries meanings of both to lift up and to praise. As Jesus predicts his crucifixion, he underscores that this is at the same time his glorification. In John's narrative, Jesus' resurrection and ascension denote the Son's return to the Father after completing the work that he'd been sent to do. And as Jesus starts to unpack this salvation, his mission, he outlines his mission as primarily salvific rather than condemnation. As we draw ever closer to Holy Week and Easter, this bears repeating. Salvation, not condemnation. Expansiveness, not limited. Preparing for God's conquering of death, not guilt that we've sinned and fallen short. Jesus is talking about the way that God shows love to the world, rather than how much God shows love to the world. The way that God loves is by coming in the flesh to offer salvation broadly and deeply. To underscore what he means by salvation, Jesus uses a rather obscure incident from Numbers, but it would have been familiar to Nicodemus. It's an incident concerning Moses saving the people from poisonous snakes in the wilderness by lifting up a bronze serpent. Jesus offers eternal life in the kingdom of heaven, even if he is lifted up in the most ignominiously gruesome way possible. Not even death can conquer God's glory. I have to wonder, though, how Nicodemus felt when Jesus began to talk about darkness and light. After all, Nicodemus had come under the cover of darkness because he was genuinely curious about Jesus, but a little worried about approaching him in public. Perhaps we better understand, though, how Nicodemus might have felt if we look at how Nicodemus moves from this initial encounter in darkness towards light. To do this, we need to pay attention to where Nicodemus reappears in John's Gospel. Nicodemus reappears the next time during Jesus' trial. He urges his fellow Pharisees, the chief priests, that they need to give this man a fair trial, not a kangaroo court. And after the crucifixion, it's Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea who take down Jesus' body and place it in the tomb. Prepare him as they would have prepared one who was a king. Nicodemus moves from hiding into the light, living out his faith. Now, in this discussion of the manner of God's love, we may see signboards and end zones with placards reading John 3.16. But that's not exactly what Jesus means by living in public, professing a faith that is clear and not hidden. What Jesus means is something a little closer to the life of President, former President Jimmy Carter. Carter is an unapologetic Christian. He sees his faith as something to live 
rather than something to announce. He lives up his faith in the work that he does. His evangelism, his proclamation of the gospel, comes from his life and his work, not necessarily from his words. He was changed by his relationship with God. And it shows in his life. So how are we changed by our relationship with God? As Presbyterians, we may have more in common with Nicodemus than we care to admit. We are scholars. We study scripture. We follow rules. We're genuinely curious about learning more. Well, study is important, and wrestling with God's word leads to deeper understanding. Jesus reminds us that we are called to change our whole lives, to live our faith, not merely to profess it. So how do we live out that faith? Well, it doesn't have to necessarily be in grand gestures. But sometimes living faithfully in our context. On Thursday, I watched as an enthusiastic group of fourth and fifth graders in K-Kids cleaned up the playground from the trash left behind after the snow melted. They were excited about doing this work. In fact, asked, can we do this every week? Could we do this during recess? They were living out what it meant to be a member of this community. They didn't just announce, they're leaders. They led in making their playground safe and clean. Friday, I sat in on launch presentations at, where, with high school students. These young people did not announce that they were learning about their community and thinking about the statistics that they were learning. They used their energy, imagination, intelligence, and love to test solutions to real-world problems and challenges and contribute to their community. To give two examples, one group worked with Aster Assisted Living Community to work on the problem of loneliness. And they plan to continue their work in the, second, or the third trimester. They tested things like um, teach and learn, coffee and conversation, cookie decorating, and they're going to test music next trimester. Another group worked with helping it to have our, it worked with us in Kiwanis on helping to make sure that our, um, the money that we give to the community and the work that we do to raise money, talk to one another. They help to work out a system where we can look at what we give to a group and ask them to help us find volunteers to work at the county fair selling ice cream, which is one of our fundraisers, or to help to um, work at the stands during fall nationals at the tractor pull. It's something I think that Optimus has been doing for a while. But we're getting on board as well. What I noticed in both of these situations is that they weren't grand gestures. They were dealing with something that sparked an interest in the community and working towards making a difference. Perhaps we've been reticent because we feel like what we have to offer is not enough. But God invites us 
that the way that we are baptized from above, what the born again from above, is to live in the world and to recognize that God loves us in a manner that wants us, invites us to come into the light. We're always given a choice to condemn or to immerse ourselves in the Spirit of God and be forever changed as God's beloved people. May it be so. Amen. Let's rise and affirm our, the faith of the Universal Church in the Nicene Creed on page 34 in the front of your hymnal. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. Proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. With this book of his prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us sing together. My song is Love Unknown, number 209.
prepare to come before God in prayer? Are there particular concerns you would like to pray for as a people today? Then let us continue to pray for our friends Marvin and Paul. Paul went over to Madison. He kind of came in through Monroe and they sent him over to Madison um, with more difficulties with the flood that is gathering and is um, on, his, on his heart and in his body. So they sent him to Madison to get um, care with his own cardiologist. So let us pray. God of salvation, we have cried to you, and you have delivered us. We trust in your faithfulness, even when we cannot see the way forward. We ask for your help and your presence in our own lives, our own struggles, our own hurts. In the lives of those we hold dear, especially praying this week for Marn and Paul. In the lives of those who are struggling, in the needs of this neighborhood, in the soil and water of this earth, in the global crises that seem so far beyond us. We thank you for your love and guidance in the joys that we celebrate, in the possibilities we anticipate, in the challenges we have overcome. Send out your word to heal and deliver us. Raise us up to know you, that we might know the immeasurable riches of your grace. We give thanks to you, O God, for your steadfast love endures forever. And you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, Friends, we celebrate the generosity of this gathered body. We celebrate the way we give generously to the church so that the church can do God's work in the world, to the community that we are a part of, to the world that God so loves. We give thanks for this generosity, even while we invite others to join us in giving generously, giving thanks for all that God has done for us. Let us rise and sing the refrain from number 769.
happening? I was thankful to celebrate with my uh, niece yesterday. She was on the Albany Monticello oh, Basketball oh, Championship oh, team. Um, her name is Delena Trumpy, yeah. and so we were able to celebrate with the whole team and pretty much the entire communities um, at um, Green Bay. So that was a pretty exciting couple of days. So. Congratulations, Delena and team. Yeah. Oh, what a it's wonderful uh, yes. accomplishment. <laughs> yes, uh, very much so since they were not chosen to uh, win at all. <laughs> so, and they won state. They showed yes. that small is mighty. <laughs> yes, that's for sure. So, Linda. Every team was so excited. I couldn't believe how even everybody was. <laughs> yeah, we won in overtime. I mean, yes. I, they could have very gladly just kind of let it go, but... They kind of just well, pulled together and, thing. yeah. 33 years ago, my yeah. dad was at the celebration, and he went home and he passed away right after he talked to me. And here, exactly the same day, 33 years yes. ago. And I think, yeah. the way they were working, and we said, didn't know if they were going to win, and I said, Leo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Look it up. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was 33 days prior exactly. that Monticello exactly. had beat the exact same team. Right. So it's just like it was the exact same team. Yeah, wow. same day. Oh, yes. Your dad was there. Same school. Same school. Yes. 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 I just think the music has met. Well, you might be doing the exact same thing I am. I just want to say thank you for. I'm thankful for Mary and I'm thankful for Carol oh. and for their work um, uh, and, and with the music here because it's really a joy to be able to work with them. Yes, absolutely. And y'all, I get a different perspective because I don't sing in the choir, but I get to see Matt direct. Yes. It is fabulous. You are amazing. <laughs> and so I want to know what the, um, what this version of the, um, this will be gone in about a week, if not three days. Okay. <laughs> what, what was this one called? This is not the Jack Sparrow. Yeah, I love the Jack Sparrow. That one was, yeah. Uh, but don't worry, just. <laughs> well, for all of these things, O oh Lord, we are truly thankful and joyous. Amen. Let us sing together. Let us, I want to walk as a child of the light. Number 377. <laughs> Thank you. 
beloved. God delights when we are creators of justice, when we are givers of compassion, when we go out with joy. And as we go, we go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Thank you.